Redwood National Park is such a fun place to visit. There is so much to see and do. We did a ton of research before our last visit and we had an amazing time. So we would love to share it with you. Here is our guide to three amazing days in Redwood National Park. We run at a pretty good pace on our trips and we see a lot of things. So buckle your seatbelts cause it's time for day one. The first hike that we did on our trip is known as the Elkhead Trail to College Grove. This trail is short, easy, and very beautiful. And if you visit during the right time of year, you can even get some free berries. In addition to a healthy and nutritious snack, this hike also features a beautiful secluded beach. If you're looking to add a little bit more adventure to your hike, you can always climb up this rock formation for a beautiful view at the far end of the cove. We didn't see any while we were there, but supposedly you can spot whales and dolphins from here. From the beach, you are just a short walk over from this overlook as well. This hike offers a lot for a trail that's just over three miles. After our hike, we headed over to the Newton B. Drury Scenic Drive. If you don't feel like hiking, you can take in a lot of beauty here from the comfort of your car. But if you're willing to get out, there is a lot to see. This is a great place for beginner hikers and families with small kids because there are a ton of trails here that are very short and take you to some giant trees. In fact, here's one right now. They just simply named it the Big Tree. It's definitely no mystery where it gets its name from. And if one giant tree isn't enough for you, it appears from this sign that there are plenty of other options here. There are plenty of pullouts on the side of the road that lead to miniature hiking trails. A lot of these trails wind through lush forests and take you to really unique trees and other scenic viewpoints. One of the most unique trees that we have found here so far is the corkscrew tree. I have no clue what caused this massive redwood tree to be twisted up like this, but it's definitely worth taking the 400 foot long trail to go and see it. And that pretty much wrapped up day one of our trip, so we headed back to camp to get some rest. The next day we excitedly woke up bright and early because we had some big plans. After a nice healthy breakfast, it was time to pack up the car and head off for day two of our trip. We will be starting off this day with a hike on the Tall Trees Grove Trail. Just a heads up, this trail does require a permit, but the good news is the permit is free. Without the permit, you won't even have the combination to get into the gate. You can apply for the permits up to four weeks in advance and you can find all the information about how to go about getting one on our website. This hike was quite a bit more substantial than anything that we did on the first day. It has a total distance of right around five miles with an elevation gain of 860 feet. It was downhill pretty much all the way out so that means you have to save your energy because it's gonna be a climb all the way back. Once you reach the bottom of the hill, the scenery changes and you end up in a beautiful moss covered forest. This place is pretty much a dream come true for people who like landscape photography. Unless you plan on blitzing the trail, expect to spend about four to six hours here. From there, we headed just down the road to yet another beautiful hike. And the good thing is this one doesn't require a permit. This short and easy hike was dedicated to Lady Bird Johnson, who just so happened to be the wife of the 36th president of the United States, Lyndon B. Johnson. This is another hike that is great for most skill levels. It is just over a mile long and it only has an elevation gain of right around 100 feet. Somehow between the two trails we had managed to burn up yet another day of our Redwood National Park trip. So it was once again time to head back to camp. At this point, we pretty much thought that we saw the coolest things that we were going to see on this trip, but little did we know what day three had in store for us. We started off our day with a hike called the Yurok Loop to Hidden Beach. One great thing about this trail, aside from more free berries, is that it has a little bit of something for everyone. Aside from the beautiful scenic views here, there is a series of interconnecting trails. This lets you hike anywhere from two and a half miles all the way up to eight miles. On this day, we ended up splitting the difference and doing right around five miles. We did this while working on some serious dance moves. This is yet another hike that is fantastic for landscape photographers because you pass through so many different kinds of scenery along the way. A little ways into the hike, you're going to come to a fork. If you make it right here, you're going to go to one of the most beautiful beaches that we have seen in California. And the craziest thing is that when we went, there was no one else there and we had this entire place to ourselves. I was starting to think that we were just going to move here when V found this cute little shack complete with its own front door, but it didn't have a refrigerator or anywhere to store her snacks, so we decided against it. What it did have though is a beautiful beach to explore with sand that was almost black. After taking in this beautiful beach scene, it was time to start heading back. 
Instead of doing this as a standard out and back trail, we did make a right to complete the Yurok Loop. After we got back to the car, it was time to head to the last hike of the trip, which also ended up being our favorite. The Fern Canyon Trail is the only hike on this list that you're going to have to pay for. At the time of the recording of this video, it was $10, but it is totally worth it. We started off this trail in style with a Roosevelt elk sighting before heading into the lush green forest. Once you get into the Slot Canyon, you will find yourself at the bottom of towering green fern covered walls. If you're feeling like you're in a scene from a movie, you're right. Several scenes from Jurassic Park 2 were actually filmed here. And with that, our list is coming to a close. We hope you enjoyed our video on how to have three epic days in Redwood National Park. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because those are the best things that you can do to support this channel. Check us out on Instagram at thatadventurelife underscore official. And for more information about everything that you saw in this video, head on over to thatadventurelife.com.